Hello and thanks again for joining Tools. Welcome to part 2 of the lecture on inotropes and vasopressors which forms the second in the lecture series for the online orations for learning through seminars, tools in anesthesia and critical care. Myself, Sanish from Sultan Kabus University Hospital, Muscat. In part 1, we have plotted the commonly used vasoactive drugs according to their effects. This helps in our decision making regarding our first choice drug. Further, we may decide to add another agent in an effort to achieve the target and to reduce possible side effects targeting catecholamine sparing. The pathophysiology dictates the goals of therapy and we always rely on the best available clinical evidence. Now, let us take a few clinical scenarios and see how we can decide on the choice of vasoactive agents. The first one is cardiogenic shock complicating acute myocardial infarction. Here we have to strike a balance between the risks and benefits of drug therapy with vasoactive agents. Inotropes or vasopressors may lead to ventricular arrhythmias, contraction band necrosis or even infarct expansion. On the other hand, critical hypotension will result in further compromised myocardial perfusion, elevated LV filling pressures raised myocardial oxygen requirement and further reduction in coronary perfusion pressure all of these mean that you may lose your patient. So I would like to choose in favor of picking an anotrop or vasopressor and now the question is how do I decide? Going back to our classification grid and the plot you need an anotrop how about a vasopressor? It can increase the afterload and myocardial work, right? So dobutamine comes up in the list. Let us see if this matches with the guidelines from literature. The ACC AHA, American College of Cardiology, American Heart Association guidelines for management of hypotension, complicating acute myocardial infarction suggests the use of dobutamine as the first line agent if systolic blood pressure ranges between 70 and 100 millimeters of mercury in the absence of signs and symptoms of shock. Dopamine is suggested in patients who have the same systolic blood pressure in the presence and symptoms of shock. However, definitive evidence supporting the use of specific agents in this setting is lacking. Moderate doses of these agents maximize inotropy and avoid excessive alpha-1 adrenergic stimulation that can result in end organ ischemia. Moderate doses of combinations of dopamine and dobutamine may potentially be more effective than maximal doses of any individual agent. When response to a medium dose of dopamine or dopamine dobutamine combination is inadequate or the patient's systolic blood pressure is less than 70 millimeters of mercury, the use of norepinephrine has been recommended. With an antithrombotic effect in addition to its pressure qualities, norepinephrine may be the optimal choice under these conditions. How about epinephrine? It can exacerbate lactic acidosis, cause tachyarrhythmias and promote thrombosis especially in the coronary vasculature. Vasopressin may be effective in norepinephrine resistant vasodilatory shock improving mean arterial pressure, cardiac index and reducing the need for norepinephrine resulting in reduced cardiotoxicity and malignant arrhythmias. Going to scenario number two, neurocritical care that is 
traumatic brain injury or acute neurologic injury traumatic brain injury is a major global public health problem among the predictors of outcome of traumatic brain injury hypotension is the most amenable to prevention and hence it should be aggressively managed appropriately aggressive fluid administration is the first step in the resuscitation vasopressors should be used to achieve the targeted cerebral perfusion pressure or mean arterial pressure if these could not be obtained with adequate fluid resuscitation so we choose an agent from this zone the available evidence suggests that nor epinephrine should be considered as vasopressor of choice in such scenarios however phenylephrine a pure alpha agonist vasoactive agent is recommended in traumatic brain injury patients with tachycardia the study published in critical care medicine in 2008 evaluated phenylephrine versus vasopressin to titrate to cerebral perfusion pressure above 70 mm of mercury after 6 hours it was observed that increase in icp is more with phenylephrine so vasopressin group scores here brain tissue po2 was better maintained in vasopressin group though peripheral tissue po2 was compromised in vasopressin group moving on to the third scenario severe sepsis or septic shock we have recommendations from surviving sepsis campaign the collaboration of european society of intensive care medicine and society of critical care medicine we can go back to the grid and the plot the issue in septic shock is severe vasodilatation leading to relative hypovolemia and shock so fluid resuscitation and vasoconstrictors will play a lead role though the management of the underlying sepsis the root cause would be the cornerstone of treatment here we choose from vasopressors and in the plot here is our area or zone of interest what does norepinephrine do it has prominent alpha 1 adrenergic action it improves systemic vascular resistance and systemic blood pressure norepinephrine does not substantially worsen end organ ischemia it shows efficacy in raising the mean arterial pressure oxygen consumption and oxygen delivery it also has added advantage of increasing not decreasing gastric ph hence surviving sepsis campaign designates norepinephrine as the first choice vasopressor how about epinephrine it is usually added to and potentially substituted for norepinephrine when an additional agent is needed to maintain adequate mean arterial pressure dopamine is used as an alternative agent to norepinephrine only in highly selected patients like patients with low risk of tachyarrhythmias and absolute or relative bradycardia surviving sepsis campaign does not recommend phenylephrine in the treatment of shock except in the following conditions one norepinephrine associated with serious arrhythmias two when cardiac output is known to be high and blood pressure persistently low three as salvage treatment when the combined inotropic vasopressor drugs and low dose vasopressin have failed to achieve mean arterial pressure target low dose vasopressin 0.03 units per minute can be added to norepinephrine with the intent of either raising mean arterial pressure or catecholamine sparing by reducing norepinephrine dosage however low dose vasopressin is not recommended as the single initial vasopressor higher dose vasopressin should be reserved for salvage treatment the studies like vasopressin and septic shock trial 
failed to show significant mortality benefit with low dose vasopressin or vasopressin norepinephrine combination similar results with uh, epinephrine versus norepinephrine dobutamine combination our fourth scenario is anaphylactic shock we know epinephrine is the antidote for anaphylaxis along with massive fluid resuscitation it is potentially life saving repeat doses of intramuscular epinephrine may be required as epinephrine is short acting the dose is 0.3 to 0.5 mg intramuscular of 1 in 1000 solution remember there are no absolute contraindications to using epinephrine in the context of anaphylactic shock and failure to do so promptly can lead to adverse outcomes if vasopressors are required epinephrine 1 in 10000 solution may be started at 1 micrograms per minute increasing to 10 micrograms per, per minute as required dopamine infusion 2 to 20 micrograms per kg per minute may also be added in case of refractory shock or in beta block patients initially you can try atropine for uh, bradycardia which is symptomatic glucagon should be considered as it exerts positive inotropic and chronotropic effects on the heart independent of catecholamines therefore glucagon 1 mg iv bolus followed by an infusion of 1 to 5 mg per hour may improve hypotension in 1 to 5 minutes with a maximal benefit of 5 to 15 minutes these drugs are also included in our topic we have phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitors like enoximon milrinone calcium sensitizers like levosimendan and endogenous hormone vasopressin with that we come to the concluding part of this lecture my attempt was to impress upon the change of orientation from agents to effects in our decision making the whole of our discussion was based on the plot of agents depending on their effects i hope you got my take home messages it's been my pleasure bringing this presentation to you looking forward to return with another interesting topic it's me sanish signing off thanks again for watching tools in anesthesia and critical care your feedbacks will be much appreciated